Hi everyone, I'm Danielle Green, Director of Gardens and Grounds here at Naples Zoo at Caribbean Gardens. I'm really excited to share with you this week our celebration for National Public Gardens Week. Some people come to the zoo to see the animals, but we also have this amazing plant collection. We're very fortunate this was a historic property, so we have a lot of specimens that are upwards of 100 years old, and I'm hoping to share some of those with you today. We're standing in front of our largest species of ficus. So this particular ficus is ficus microcarpa. Some of you might also call this fig. Uh, it's also called banyan. What's really interesting uh, is banyan actually refers to traders in India that would park their markets under the canopies of these large banyan or ficus trees um, to sell their wares. So banyan refers to uh, a, a particular section of people, but also refers to these giant trees that we have here in Southwest Florida as many other parts of a tropical America. Um, and most of them are characterized by these long aerial roots that you see coming down or prop roots. So you'll see what looks like maybe fine hairs that are coming down here. These are actually uh, roots. They are gathering air and moisture out of our humid climate here and as they grow and mature they'll actually become hard like the other bigger roots that you see forming these aerial roots or prop roots. So we've already seen one of our largest ficus here on property at the Naples Zoo Caribbean Gardens. This is our smallest. So this would be a ground cover ficus or fig. This is ficus montana oak leaf fig here. Um, these are newly planted but we're hoping that they're going to take over here create a really nice ground cover. So now you've seen our largest fig and our smallest. All right, here we have Ficus altissima or lofty fig. Um, this is located over by Coyote and again on Bear Loop. Um, we have two of them, or sisters as I call it, one on one side of Coyote um, and one on the other side. So this is a really good example of these aerial roots that come down and grow out and actually create a situation where the tree kind of walks or takes up a lot of space here um, and we're happy to, to have it. Uh, Nearling era again planted in the 1920s. The great thing about these trees is they provide so much shade um, and we know that shade is something we always need here in Southwest Florida especially this time of year. Something I do want to point out all of your figs are going to produce figs of course. Berries, fruit, um, there is your standard fig that you can buy in the grocery store, but in general, most of your ficus species or figs um, produce a fruit that is really more palatable to birds um, and small mammals that come along, but they also make a really big mess. So here we are right at the entrance um, where we have another Indian laurel fig or ficus microcarpa. Um, those of you that have been to the zoo, as soon as you exit the gift shop, you see this grandiose specimen um, this is a Fleischmann era, um, so about mid, uh, mid to late 50s um, into early 60s, this ficus would have been planted. Um, we've got a lot of aerial roots. Um, you might also see some holes in some of our large trunks around the zoo. So what these are is this is where we do injections. This is how we inject micronutrients um, and any sort of... Um, necessary treatment that we need. If we find a pest uh, that we need to kind of keep under control, this is where we would do these injections. We drill a small hole just into the first layer of bark. We input a small um, insert, and then we uh, can actually inject the material right into it. A couple reasons for that. Number one, it's quicker uptake by the plant. Um, it's much more efficient. Uh, it's much more cost effective and in a public situation, especially where we have animals, we don't want to broadcast spray. So that has worked really well for us and been able to keep our historic specimens uh, very happy and healthy here at the zoo. Okay guys, wanted to show you some examples of how diverse the genus of ficus really is. Um, there's estimated to be over 800 different species of ficus um, from all over the world, uh, mainly places Southwest Asia, Australia, etc. Um, so just wanted to give you a, a quick little tutorial on what the different types look like. So here in Southwest Florida, two of our most common are going to be the ficus microcarpa that we saw over at Bear. Um, and then we also have ficus benjamina or weeping fig. This is the one that you would commonly see in offices, malls, um, home pl house plants, etc. 
These look really, really similar, but if you look at the leaves, I'm going to just pull up one here, Ficus microcarpa, Ficus benjamina. So you'll notice the tip. Notice how there's an elongated kind of pointy tip here, um, and while on microcarpa, it's not quite as pronounced. So that is one particular way that we tell these two apart. Then you look here at the bow fig, very different type leaf, um, but still a ficus religiosa. Uh, then here we have ficus altissima or lofty fig, much bigger leaves, similar, but again, look at that elongated tip. So with plants, you know, with animals, we'll use striping patterns, different colors. Um, even with humans, we use hair color, eye color to distinguish um, ourselves from each other, but plants have unique features as well. So we'll look at how the leaves or branches are arranged along the stem. There's opposite, where they're completely opposite each other. These would be alternate. They alternate locations along the branch. And then here, this is Ficus lutea. Um, very different, much larger leaves, a very pronounced vein going through the center of the leaf here. Um, it, very, very common. A lot of your ficus, the, the branching um, can be a little bit different, but it depends on the age. Uh, this is new growth, so it's going to be nice and healthy and light green, um, whereas this is a little bit older wood, um, but this is the new wood, so you can distinguish new wood from old wood from last year. So just a couple of little um, tips and tricks to, to tell our plant friends apart 